Good afternoon, and we have another speaker chat for This Is Us conference, which is now only two weeks away today. Woo, really excited. Today, I welcome Ian Washington Smith from Shine Smith Academy, which is a training academy and a provider of coaching and training opportunities to empower your staff. Good afternoon, Ian, and welcome to This Is Us. Good afternoon. Good to hear you all. Good to speak to you all. Absolutely. So Ian, um, just in your own words, if you want to give me a brief overview of Shine Smith and how that fits in with diversity and inclusion within the workplace, that'd be wonderful. So Shine Smith uh, started off really as, a, as an agency involved in sales and uh, acquired uh, an empowerment academy essentially to, to further its own business aims of, of, of helping people reach their potential. It was about the potential in sales, but you, you attain the potential in sales by achieving the potential in people. And a lot of the time, they, in order to, to, to do that, a, a lot of companies who do it other, in other ways, they sort of focus on the target and drive people towards the target. Our focus is on people understanding themselves and empowering themselves to, to reach their potential and therefore achieve the target. The, 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 the coaching academy uh, has really then developed its own, its own sort of, of, of driving ethos, right, through this empowerment thing, which, which really fits into all sorts of different spheres. And at, at, the, at the root of it is, OK, if you're saying you're going to understand yourself, what does that mean? Is that just a general awareness? Is it like a mindfulness thing or is it more than that? And for us, it's more than that. It's it's three things, essentially. It's it's building awareness first. And that's actually how you tick, how you relate to your environment and how some situations will be problematic for you, but won't be problematic for somebody else. And the same situation that's not that, that that's that's OK for somebody else may not be OK for you. So what are the common components of that? And we know that that's your belief system. So that's we we one of our specialisms is is actually helping you understand how that impacts on you in a, in a, and we make it very practical and simple. And that's really the first basis of empowerment. So that's awareness. The second one is adaptation. It's all right learning, but learning doesn't actually bring about change. Change is brought about by practice, practicing the new way of behaving. That's difficult for us because we like our habits. We're comfortable with our habits, so things stand in the way. So as a, as a result of doing that, that's how we begin to get the, the best out of people. Anticipation is where it becomes routine, where the new ad advantageous goal-related behavior becomes routine and you're then operating in that way. But what one of the byproducts of understanding uh, more about belief systems is you understand other people. Other people have difficulties, rigidities, limitations, etc. And sometimes we just automatically assume they'll be like us. And because they're not like us, we get irritated, we move into an emotion, and we see what they do in a very exaggerated way, and therefore we don't get collaboration, and therefore it's not goal-related behaviour. That no, that does sum it up. It sums up that it's really important to empower people in the workplace. Yes, because yes. that's the, the the main thread of diversity and inclusion is actually giving people that empowerment and people to recognise their own strengths and weaknesses through your coaching program, and therefore then it helps them progress within their organisation. So that of course relates to whole diversity and inclusion. So with regard to diversity and inclusion, just in a, in a couple of words or a few words, what, why do you think that's important and why do you think employees need to recognise that? Well, I, I, in a former career, I was a, I was a police officer, I was a, I was a senior police manager, and I, I was one of the ones, and he says he's in my bio, it talks about this, who started the, what they call the Thames Valley Black Police Association. And many forces have their own associations, whether black and Asian or black or black or what multiracial or whatever they want to call them. But they, they have the same objectives. And, uh, you know, looking back at what we're saying then and the data we're looking at then, 
I look now and we're still talking about the same sorts of issues, but perhaps about a different range, a broader range of people, because we, we now have more categories of diversity. So, so for me, one of the things I've really learned is that as we're looking into this environment, and we're looking at what the organisation should do for us. Yes, they should. But also the opportunity comes with what you can do for yourself. And you don't realise you can do that for yourself until you start to look within. And so that's where I come from. And, and, and as well as doing that, there's also taking action, because as long as you're looking at the person that hasn't made it, that may be black, Asian or some other diversity strand, let's look at the people that have made it. What are they doing that's different? So I'm not saying that the problems don't exist, but I say that part of overcoming them is our attitude towards them. And that's what I'm interested in, because I think that's where we can make a real difference. That's absolutely right, because it is. It goes back to one's own um, sort of strengths and weaknesses, doesn't it? We have to recognise you know, that we're actually not all the same, everybody is different, and there are going to be roles, you know, some role models um, who look like you, but they're going to be other people who don't, but we sh you could actually still relate to. Yes. So it's, it's, it's about the, having that balance of recognising, you know, where there's a problem and how you can also contribute to breaking down that problem and breaking down those barriers and not actually, and, and seeing it more as an opportunity rather than um, a barrier as such. Absolutely and I just add to that that it's not about positive thinking some people think just think positively it'll all go away it's not about that at all it's about being realistic that there will be challenges but that's life you know, and you'll notice that that you you, you get over challenges and you move through them and you grow and that's what life experience is all about. Sometimes people get the impression that because it's uncomfortable, that, that, that it shouldn't happen. Well, that's not how life works. No, that's, that's absolutely right. And um, I think that kind of leads on to the session that you'll be running for uh, This Is Us conference, all about imposter syndrome. So if you can just give us a really brief overview of what the session is going to be about, but of course, don't give away too many secrets. Yeah, uh, so first of all, to, to understand the imposter syndrome, you have to think a different way. The, the general way you're conditioned to think is that this, this thing is happening to you, but you don't actually realise how much power you have over it. And that's really where I'm going to be coming at from it. And, and you might think, how does this guy know this? And I, I say to you, well, I, the first thing is I suffered from it throughout my career. And people say he was a police officer. Surely he didn't suffer with it. Yes, I did. But not in every situation, just like the people who are listening to this. You don't suffer with any every situation. It's interesting that you choose the situations you suffer with. And that's where that's where I'll be coming from. So there'll be some real answers to the problem. I, I don't like to just talk about things. I want us to be able to take action and overcome them and you can with that and that's what I work with people doing now overcoming those types of issues so it's going to be a really interesting talk that's fantastic because that, that's the whole point of the conference is not just talking about it it's about giving people strategies and tools to take away with them to then apply into their own organization and see how they get on and then of course if there's any other information that they need or more support that they need absolutely they can, they can come back to you and you'll absolutely welcome them and yeah. support them in anything else that they might need in yeah. the future I think that's really important to understand. Yes. So obviously coming back to the conference, um, the diversity and inclusion and this is us conference, why do you feel it's important to um, to talk about diversity and inclusion and why do you feel that events like this is us are really important to progress that conversation? Because it's a it's a it's a dialogue that's still really misunderstood and and you know, we listen. My view is that we're a lot better than we were, right? But there's there's more of an understanding that needs to be to 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 be to be pursued in terms of the particular audience that we have. And you can only pursue it if it's discussed, because a lot of the time it's not discussed, and the ideas within it, which which actually drive organisations on to change, it's. It's part of the organisation's change. If I go back to 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 my own my own police career, you know, people say, well, what what did that what difference did diversity make? 
it made a real a real massive difference to the police service and people might say yeah but they're still racist well they're not you know there's some individuals that may be but generally you know organize the, the way the organization operates is with a much better understanding of different communities much better than when we first started and really that's 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 the message for 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 business that that if we we can get the best out of our people by understanding them more and utilizing their skills utilizing what they have to offer um we'll be in a much much better position in in what we do we 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 look at behavioral styles behavioral styles is diversity it's understanding that yeah the people that often get to the top of the organization necessarily will get there because they're driven to achieve targets and by doing that they're looking at their career targets you get other people who are people focused who don't do that but it doesn't mean that they won't make good leaders so how do we get the best leaders how do we get the best blend of leadership at the top into that boardroom well we do it by understanding the range of diversity so there's a lot to be gained from from continuing this education uh, about difference a lot to be gained from it and 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 as we as we we get that understanding we become better managers and better leaders and that's really what the essence of 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 what what's what's at the root of what we teach that's absolutely right because it's you know the, the conference is all about bringing people together exchanging ideas uh, discussing various thoughts and actually you know um provoking debate really around um, around the particular subject positive debate and encouraging yeah. people to really have those uncomfortable conversations um, and recognize why it's uncomfortable and how we can be more comfortable about diversity and inclusion about various topics that go within it so of course that's great that you've come on board really really excited so just um a, a small personal question to to um finish off our interview is do you have a favorite book and what is it and, and why is it your favorite um i would say my my favorite book is to kill a mockingbird right and you know for me it's one of those books that you read it a second time and more comes out of it and and it's really all about you know acceptance of difference and and it's funny i i had to reflect on that question and think what is it and that's the one that came to mind but I suppose it's because it, 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 it all really reflects reflects the acceptance of difference. And, and what I would say now is you really have to understand how difference comes about. You know, my you know, people talk about unconscious bias like it's a mystery. Well, you can you can really begin to understand it when you understand how belief systems work. You know, and not only that, you can you can detach yourself from the way you've come to brave enough to do that and that's where your potential is so that's why wonderful that's really interesting analogy in there actually very interesting never really thought of that so i think i might have to get you know read the book um, and see what it's all about because I, I know obviously know about it but i haven't read it myself so i think i might just have to buy it and put it on my reading list well thank you so much ian for your time i really look forward to seeing you in two weeks time um i know you are going to be part of the women's program talking about imposter syndrome on the 21st of october thank you so much and I will see you soon. And can I just give a final message to anybody that's listening? It's a very, very common problem and you will get some answers. So I look forward to, to you all, you know, tuning in and listening on the day. It'd be great. Thank you so much. Okay.